Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Prime Minister attends the funeral of Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. The debate of the amendment to the Defence Force Act continues. And we hear from the Parliament and the people on International Women's Day 2030. In our top story, there was a large turnout of the state funeral of President Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. Many world leaders flew to the Caribbean country to show their support, including Prime Minister the Honourable Kamala Passad Bissessa. Prime Minister the Honourable Kamala Pesadi Sessa attended the state funeral of President Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. On arrival there, the Honourable Prime Minister spoke of the way in which the deceased president would be remembered by many, including herself. You know, President Chavez uh, really instilled that kind of passion and commitment to causes and to dealing with the dispossessed, uh, trying to bring equality of treatment to all, trying to lift uplift those uh, who needed help. Um, today I see in Caracas as I'm here, uh, arriving here, you can see a very somber mood. There's a very somber mood um, reflecting a nation in mourning. And we too from Trinidad and Tobago, we offer our sympathies, our condolences uh, to the people of Venezuela, to the government of Venezuela, and of course to the family. Of President Chavez. The Honorable Prime Minister described President Chavez as being a friend and allied of the CARICOM and looks forward to continued diplomatic relations with Venezuela. We have a lot in common. We share the same Caribbean Sea. We share the borders. In fact, Venezuela is so close to us. And indeed, many of our families are here. I've mentioned before and I repeat, my mother-in-law, who has now passed away, but last time I was here, she was very much alive. My brother-in-law, um, they live here with their children. and. That's not just my family. Many families have very close links with Venezuela. The Prime Minister stated that President Chavez had a torch that he carried in an effort to unite the region, Latin America and the Caribbean. She says this torch has been passed on as his dream will fall on the mantle of CARICOM leaders to uphold the CELAC. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. It is being proposed that members of the public be able to go to the Police Complaints Authority to air their grievances against members of the Trinidad and Tobago Army. This as debate on the amendment to the Defence Force Act continues. Attorney General Senator of the Honourable Anand Ramlogan brought the amendment to the Defence Force Act before the Parliament again following changes made to the initial proposal. The Act seeks to allow members of the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment the same powers of members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service when they go on joint operations. When any member of the Defence Force having been charged with, having been charged under subsection 2 with the duty of assisting any member of the police service in the maintenance of law and order is engaged in so doing, he shall have the same powers, authorities, privileges and immunities as are given by law to members of the police service. The Attorney General says the government has made changes following concerns raised by the public. He explains a main concern expressed is the ability of members of the public to get redress if they have a grievance against any soldier engaged in the act of assisting the police in maintaining law and order. Currently, there is no formal complaints body set up to receive and investigate complaints lodged against these soldiers. The Attorney General is proposing that the Police Complaints Authority becomes that body which hears and investigates these complaints. The government, since this, uh, since this bill has been made public, has listened very carefully to the comments made by members of the public. We have therefore sought to introduce that provision to give some measure of protection to members of the public who have queried how they will be able to air their grievance and the redress mechanism so that the police complaints authority will in fact be op available as an avenue for redress. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Local parliamentarians took time off from house business to recognize International Women's Day 2013. While representatives brought greetings to fellow MPs, calls were made for greater meeting Mon mentoring sorry, of women and young girls to take place within their individual constituency. Members of Parliament took time from their busy lawmaking schedule 
to reflect on International Women's Day during the sitting of the House of Representatives this Friday. House Speaker Wade Markwell notes the day provides an opportunity to look back at the achievements of all female peers. He calls on parliamentarians to work together with their constituents in raising such awareness and carrying it to every community. While in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the required legislation, there is still more that can be done to protect the many women who are the ones responsible for meeting their family needs through the implementation of policies that ensure that they have the resources and information necessary to efficiently perform this responsibility. It is indeed a time for action. And I am informed that there will be numerous activities being hosted this month of March aimed at reducing public misunderstanding about gender. While this year's theme is a promise is a promise, time for action to end violence against women, Minister of State in the Ministry of the Environment and Water Resources, Ramona Ramdiel, says Parliament remains committed to ensuring proper policies are implemented aimed at creating awareness of gender roles. I am advised that our Ministry of Gender, Youth and Child Development which is very capably led by Senator Marlene Kudre, is planning a year-long campaign starting today which will focus on the varied roles, issues and concerns related to women. Several pieces of legislation are also being reviewed, including the Domestic Violence Act, to bring them into line with international best practice. During our 50 years of independence, Trinidad and Tobago can be justly proud of our many female heroes and icons in areas of sport, culture, academia, literature, public and social service, politics, and the creative industries. I invite every parliamentarian to continue to work together and to support our very active civil society network to stop the violence against women and girls. She adds to the call for fellow MPs to join in solidarity in mentoring women and young girls within their constituency. As women parliamentarians, we are perhaps mo some of the most high-profile and influential examples of the heights women may attain once they are presented with the opportunities to realize their potential. And we must accept the responsibility to mentor the young women and girls in our families and in our constituencies who may be considering public office as a career. More so, we have to encourage the women and girls around us to know and understand their rights as equal and contributing citizens in their homes, communities and our nation. Currently in the lower house, there are 11 female members out of the 42 MPs, while seven hold positions in the Senate. It is envisioned by Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa that in the near future, women will comprise 50% in both the lower and upper house. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. After the break, Forest Fire Prevention Program launched. Stay with us. Welcome back. On International Women's Day 2013, women are uniting under this year's theme, A Promise is a Promise, Time for Action to End Violence Against Women. Here at home while observances are being held, many are voicing their views and finding solutions to the issue of violence against women. As the world commemorates International Women's Day, women across the globe unite in looking back at a year of shocking violent crimes against women and focus on creating a brighter future for the next generation of girls. This year, the United Nations has themed observances a promise is a promise, time for action to end violence against women. The international organization is advancing their Unite program to end violence against women campaign which is based on fundamental rights, which states women and girls have a human right to live free of violence. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, while many events have been carded to mark this occasion, 
women are voicing their thoughts on the topic, moving away from violence being an issue of taboo towards finding solutions. All share similar views curbing violence against women should be dealt with. Long ago, there was nobody to even, it was considered a taboo. Nobody wanted to speak out and there were more and more violence against women. I am so glad you took the initiative to do something about women who is being battered because really and truly it is unfair. For years, the issue has not only been hushed and silenced as one unmentionable, but taken lightly and ignored, despite the effects it has had on numerous lives. Some have expressed that calls for help should always be heeded, and the need to move away from treating such incidents casually as the value of human life is at stake. Well, there's a fair attitude about getting to it. And when I say I don't know if I should be, they will report it to the police station or to some person in authority. And they will listen to it, but they respond on their good old time. And many, many women end in debt because they took long to get to them. After the fact, they're trying to help women after the fact. When you die, there's no more. There's a child there, there's some children. Others say educating our young girls and boys in the nation's schools is a start towards ending the cycle of violence and abuse against women. Where do we start? I think we should start in schools and in the home. Long ago, young people had respect for older people. And we seem to have been losing this now. So we need to start at the home. It should be somewhere in the values education at schools. And then again at the home, the onus is on parents to train their kids to what to do or how to deal with people. UN Women Executive Director Michelle Bachelet stresses that discrimination and violence against women and girls have no place in the 21st century. She says enough is enough and the message of both outrage and hope that discrimination and violence must end lies in saying yes to peace, human rights, justice and equality. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Various environmental and related agencies are collaborating to create a forest fire prevention program. The program was launched at the River Estate Museum and Water Wheel in Dago Martin. Soon, setting fires to forests will be considered a serious crime and will be treated as such. This was the warning issued by Minister of the Environment and Water Resources, Senator the Honorable Ganga Singh, at the launch of the Forest Fire Prevention Program. The program will see the Forestry Division, the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service, the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Services, and other related agencies working together to reduce forest fires and its effects on the environment and the nation. The program, whose motto is Burn It, Regret It, will see the agencies embark on a public education campaign. Citizens will be educated about the adverse effects of bushfires, including the loss of forest resources and how it can cause flooding during the rainy season. Minister Singh says there is now a need for legislative intervention by the government before forest fires get out of hand. We recognize that in the, the ministry there was need for us to do things differently. That we have this seasonal dry season in which you have forest fires. You have a kind of cultural behavior where people set fires indiscriminately. And it is related to agriculture. So that therefore there is need for us to intervene. We need to intervene legislatively. We need for us to intervene culturally and build awareness as to the impact of forest fires on the public health, the environment, and subsequently on the infrastructure. He says this legislative intervention must also be enforced. The legislative inter intervention will mean that it will be accompanied by greater enforcement, and therefore greater enforcement is required. There is need to change the Agricultural Fires Act. That, no doubt, is perhaps as old as the Forestry Division. So that therefore there is need for us to look at that differently, and the permitting system simply is insufficient for us. It must be accompanied by a greater degree of enforcement. Minister Singh urges citizens to desist from setting even backyard fires to dispose of garbage. He says soon persons who wish to dispose of garbage in such a manner will have to apply for a permit, as this is also a dangerous practice 
with dangerous consequences. Minister Singh promises that the legislation will ensure stiff penalties for persons found guilty of starting fires. We must view fire prevention as a very serious environmental upliftment strategy and that in future we intend to ensure that setting fires will be regarded as a crime against the environment and will be a, a enforced accordingly. Gregory McBurney, News 4. His Excellency President Professor George Maxwell Richards is urging the children of Trinidad and Tobago to remember the importance of integrity in anything they do. He addressed them at the awards ceremony for the Integrity Commission's Do Right Champions Schools competition. The Integrity Commission is leading the charge to instill integrity in the nation's children from a young age. The Commission held the awards ceremony for its Do Right Champions Schools competition. The competition had two categories, short story and drawing, and targeted students in primary and secondary schools. The children were asked to submit short stories or comic strips drawings on the theme of integrity. Addressing the students gathered, President Richards emphasizes the importance of maintaining integrity at all times. Our actions affect others, whether singly or in community, be it a school or any other form of community. We have to be ever mindful that unless we are hermits, much of what we do touches someone else. Therefore, as I have said before, we must develop the habit of doing right even when no one is looking. Chairman of the Integrity Commission, Kenneth Gordon, reiterated the call by President Richards. He says integrity is as simple as four words, but important as it can change the country. But starting in your young lives, you must strive to move beyond the words and the content of your submissions to live the message of integrity. A message that can be reduced to four simple words. Do the right thing. Let your actions be guided by that message. Let your example influence those around you to help in restoring and lifting the values of our country. Mr. Gordon also thanked President Richards for his service as president and described his integrity as admirable. Permit me on behalf of the Integrity Commission and on behalf of all who respect and admire the impressive qualities of integrity, scholarship, and national commitment you have brought to the office of the presidency to thank you for your outstanding contribution to our country. You have been upright and dignified in manner, you have demonstrated tact and civility with human differences, and made a sterling contribution to our nation's development, even, Mr. President, and I suspect you won't mind my saying so, to our development of Carnival. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Up next, our sport report. Stay with us. Welcome back. International and regional high school teams from no fewer than seven countries will compete in the first ever Trinidad and Tobago Relay Carnival at the Hazley Crawford Stadium this Saturday 9th of March and Sunday 10th of March from 4.30 p.m. The opening ceremony will begin at 3 p.m. on Saturday and the Honorable Anna Roberts, Minister of Sport, will give the welcome remarks and distribute honorary awards to the Trinidad and Tobago 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games 4x400 relay team of Wendell Motley, Kent Bernard, Edwin Roberts and Edwin Skinner. The Relay Carnival is a prelude of the prestigious Penn Relays hosted annually since 1985 
by the University of Pennsylvania at Franklin Field, Philadelphia. A full menu of countries set to compete at the relay of carnival includes Canada, USA, Suriname, Bahamas, Jamaica, Antigua and Trinidad and Tobago. As a sponsor of the Relay Carnival, the Minister of Sport will host two workshops titled One Day Officiating and Introduction to Start. Both will at the VIP launch of the Hazley Crawford Stadium and will focus on various aspects of hosting relays and other areas of track and field events. The workshops will be facilitated by Trinidad and Tobago Olympian Dr. Cliff Bertrand and IAAF certified starter Miss Lisa Ferdinand who has served as starter, chief starter, starts coordinator, and technical official at several international and intercontinental games, such as the Special Olympics and Paralympics. When we take, sorry, we'll take a break, and when we return, the Interclub of Trinidad and Tobago's International Women's Day celebrations. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Interclub of Trinidad and Tobago hosted its 11th annual International Women's Day celebrations at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. The event focused on the theme, Connecting Girls, Inspiring Futures, and was attended by more than 560 persons. The Interclub of Trinidad and Tobago believes that right here in Trinidad and Tobago, there are many women who, on a daily basis, are empowering survivors of violence and defending the right of domestic workers. In celebration of women, artists came together for a multicultural show to pay tribute to women not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but women of the world. The participating members included representatives from 18 organizations here in Trinidad and Tobago and Dr. Jean Ramjan Richards, wife of President George Maxwell Richards. This yearly activity is supported not only by the members of the Interclub, but by sponsors such as Brydens, Regal Products Limited, High Fashion at Valpark Shopping Plaza, 103.5 Radio for Women, the Hyatt Regency Trinidad Hotel and various other businesses. The evening's activities included a fashion show presented by the Academy of Fashion and Design at the University of Trinidad and Tobago and the lighting of candles by our representatives of the Interclub during the performance of the International Women's Day song, I Am Woman. Proceeds from this event will be donated to various charities. And that story brings us to the end of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.